Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Sea Nocturne. It's a 5x10, and I completed it back in like, uh, I'm saying, I'm thinking February. Um, so 5x10, it's basically a nocturne. I had a plan to do sort of this blue keyed uh, sort of thing, a very kind of simple compositional motif, and the main focus of interest is the uh, sky, I would say, and, the, and the, uh, the lights in the sky. And there, of course, are reflections in the water. Now, I've seen this sort of scene, um, well, not so much like the scene I'm painting, but nocturnes with the, you know, the sky, you know, with moonlight streaking the clouds and reflections in the water. Uh, but my I haven't done much of it so I'm actually very pleased with this painting and yeah I've been looking forward to sharing it with you for a while it's uh, gonna be in my store uh, for a fair price if you feel like supporting uh, this channel supporting me go buy it by all means that helps me um, well it helps me pay for my studio rent for one and it helps me keep me in paint and it helps keep me going and so um, any of the paintings you see here that I've done that you like unless of course they're already in a gallery or I've sold them already um, I'm popping in my store and uh, we've had some pretty good success there um, also um, if you haven't already please smash that like button and uh, also uh, feel free to leave me a comment these sorts of things uh, YouTube likes them they like to see interaction uh, also, they like it when people share videos, and uh, that's another way you can help support this channel and uh, what I'm doing here, you know, sharing the old paintings. And uh, I really do enjoy just sharing my work. I, I guess I, I want to point out again that I try to pass uh, pass some sort of educational information along with each video, but it's not really the intention of the channel. Um, the main intention of the channel is just to share the paintings being done. Yeah, I, that's what I like to look at. That's what I like to watch. I love, I love it seeing artists put their work together. And uh, I always have ever since I was, um, you know, a small child. And back then, let me tell you, it was a lot more of a mystery. You didn't have um, artists with hundreds and hundreds of videos uh, showing how they made their paintings on YouTube but I just like to put that out there now and again because some people seem to be a bit confused and they think it's a uh, educational channel and that's just one of the things we do here mostly it's an entertainment channel <laughs> I happen to find watching paintings uh, get done entertaining and uh, it seems weird to just have silence and I don't know, I'd be using up all of the uh, music I had in my collection, uh, not collection, I mean my in my body of work, uh, pretty rapidly. Um, by the way, uh, the music that you hear in the background of all my videos is my music. That's my other um, thing I like to do, is uh, I like to do art and paintings, and um, actually I've been a professional artist for many, many years, so... Uh, but music, um, I'm a burgeoning professional, let's just put it that way. I have sold a few CDs here and there, but, um, you know, it's, it's always been kind of more something I did just for as a creative outlet, but there you go. Um, a bit more about this painting. So, you know, I'm thinking blues, and one of the thoughts I have in my head is like, well, I'm going to start with sort of basic blues, but I know that... I'm planning on doing a pretty strong uh, blue glaze at some point as well. So what this will do is tie everything together and glazing is very, very powerful for that. Um, it's not something you can use just uh, without thinking though, because, well, a couple things of glazing. One is that you can do your painting, you can coat it with some liquid or something, and then you can glaze over the top of that. And you can wipe most of that glaze away if it's not going well, but it's going to have an effect. It's going to have a, a slight staining effect even then, so always be mentally prepared for that. 
don't think that uh, you can change your mind after a glaze. But the other thing you'll find is that when you start getting into glazing and trying the various different colors that work, and I guess this would be a pretty good place to list off some of those. Um, I don't think I use every transparent color that could work, but I have a pretty good array of colors that I use. Uh, the main uh, color that I use for glazing almost exclusively, uh, well, meaning that it's on my palette mostly for that reason, is Transparent Earth Yellow from Gamblin. Now this gives you kind of an ochre feel. It has a bit of a green tint to it though. Subtle green, but green nonetheless. And uh, it's great because it's like <coughs> ochreish but transparent and uh, if you've worked with yellow ochre you know it's one of the uh, more opaque colors that you can use. Um, next would be uh, like the permanent orange uh, which is also from Gamblin. That's only semi-transparent and a lot of times I choose to use a little bit of that to counteract the transparent earth yellow. Uh, next color I use, I use alizarin crimson a lot and um, that's a cool red. I also use perlene red which is a more warm red uh, that's a very dramatic effect. And then I use the uh, transparent earth red um, also from Gamblin and that is a burnt sienna tone that's really good for getting toneless effects. For the glazing in this painting, which, geez, I hope I actually do do some glazing because I'm remembering doing glazing, but um, we'll probably see that in a, about four or five minutes here. Um, you can, there's two blues on my palette. One is um, cobalt blue, mostly transparent, but not completely transparent. Um, and then phthalo blue, and phthalo blue is completely transparent and probably my first go-to if I want to get into some blue glazing. Um, I use the uh, the cobalt and the uh, thalo. I work them, against <coughs> work them against each other all the time. And also that leads us to... <coughs> pardon me, frog in my throat. I do apologize. Um, dioxine purple. Dioxine purple is a purple that you cannot mix and one of the reasons is is it's highly transparent it's a great glazing color and you can take it and mix it with uh, either one of those blues to get different effects I'll be honest I use the phthalo blue a lot more because I know a very small amount of it goes a long way and uh, yeah I just it's more transparent than the cobalt but you can glaze with cobalt you can get some interesting effects if I was, say, doing more of a blue sky kind of thing, um, it would be cobalt. If I want a warmer blue, it's cobalt. A cooler blue, phthalo. And of course, the dioxine will push it into a range of indigos and purples and violets and things like that. Um, last color, uh, sometimes, I mean, you can glaze with phthalo green. I never have. Um, I mean, I use phthalo green. green, green. <laughs> pretty sparingly. It's such an artificial looking color. Uh, my favorite thing to use phthalo green with for is like if I have a sort of earthy green uh, that's a warm green I want to make it a cool green. I can add some phthalo green to that and it's pretty easy to do. also like to mix it with black for cool green shadows and that kind of thing. Um, which leads us to uh, <coughs> ivory black. is an amazing color to glaze with. Uh, you need to be careful with it because it's going to darken things, but you can also get pretty subtle effects if you add a lot a lot more extra oil. And uh, speaking of glazing, um, there is a video on my channel. Just type in glazing. Go, if you go to my channel, you click on my name there, and there's a little search box off to the uh, right. If you type glazing in there, you'll see a video that pretty much I probably just repeat everything I just told you now but let's face it we have to get into some repetition here because we've got lots of videos and um, not just videos there's a bunch of blogs that I've written too and I've recently put a bunch of those on my um, my website where I was just looking a few at a few from uh, 2013 and 14 and <coughs> Pardon me. 
thought it was really interesting how I'm most talking about the, those that was the pre video days um, I was putting up pictures and writing uh, 2012 2013 I've taken some breaks from the blogging at various points and then um, once I got into the hundred days I decided that was going to be a blog in my mind the whole time but I ended up adding in videos and then pretty much it just kind of let the videos take over because I found it uh, just a big strain to write an essay and and do a talk on a video as well so I chose to just go with the video format and kind of do you know what they call it a vlog or a video blog or whatever um, but prior to doing the videos uh, and doing all my um, sort of um, communicating uh, through that medium I was writing essays on the on the blog so uh, and you're gonna find I've been saying the same thing for years <laughs> uh, but that's okay you know repetition uh, it's kind of like life is a bit of a spiral you know you you do keep hitting the same things over and over but with the oh, now you seem that glazing I was just talking about and that looks like just straight up phthalo to me. You can see it has a kind of coolish greenish effect. And also if you notice, if you just drag the video back a little bit, it brought all the colors in the painting into, into line with one hue. And that's tonalism in a nutshell. And a lot of times what I'll do after glazing is that you just bring in other colors on top because uh, you, you can kind of key off of it. And um, in the, the book uh, that Aness, Aness's son wrote, uh, where he quotes Aness talking about glazing um, as a solution for saving a painting. Uh, he says, oh, maybe I'll just glaze it with some burnt sienna and then paint up all the lights again. And so that's essentially what I do. I kind of, um, but not just the lights. Like you can see the first thing I did was brought a little bit of a another blue into the uh, top of the sky. and. I'm also pumping up some of the highlights and uh, really the um, focal point of the painting. And so when you glaze things, you, you definitely are going to need to bring up your highlights again because it gives everything kind of a, a sameness. Um, but, you know, it's desirable on one hand because it enables you to pull things up and put more focus on things. But um, if you were to leave it just like that, it would be kind of a, a bit boring as far as the values went in the painting. Um, and you notice also with these uh, final stages, you often see me hitting the painting with a paper towel. And a lot of that I do just to take off some of the sharper edges of the, um, the paint because you don't want everything super sharp in your painting. So. Um, the paper towel is just a way to kind of knock things back and I definitely do a lot more of that um, in the second pass which is what we're looking at now um, but sometimes you'll even see me do it in the first pass in fact I did a painting in the studio today and I was actually knocking a lot of stuff back with a knife uh, just thinking well this is all a bit too facey and I want things kind of more subdued that's a great way to do that so uh, a little tip for you. Another little tip. Actually, this video has been sort of educational, so that's all good. Um, like I said, if you haven't clicked like yet, please do so. Just use your mouse muscles or your finger if you're on a tablet or a phone and smash that like button. Leave me a comment. It can be as simple as an emoji or a thanks mic or, a, you know, have a nice day or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just, um, if you can do it and uh, my store go visit it go visit my site go visit those old blogs if you're interested you know I'm trying to uh, bring in a lot bigger pictures there too so stay tuned on that anyway till I see you again with another video do me a favor please take good care and stay out